honestly, I'm not gonna have to go to the gym today because these things are so heavy. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. I've wanted to do this video for so long and it's my coffee table book collection. I have collected so many different fashion coffee table books with a couple like interior design books thrown in there. Actually, maybe just one. I just figured that if some of you are really into fashion like I am, then you might wanna also decorate your home with it. So having some fashion coffee table books is just a great way to elevate a space. And it's just so fun to be able to look through them and learn different things about these different brands that we all know and love. So without further ado, let's get right into it. first book and it's by Peter Lindbergh. This one is called Images of Women and Peter Lindbergh is one of the most famous fashion photographers basically ever. His work is incredible. I love this book so much. I don't know how many times I've gone through it but it's already been a lot. The only thing that I will say about it is that there are a few photos that are a little risque so maybe just keep that in mind if you have kids running around. But other than that I think that these photos are incredible. The models talk about how he was really able to capture capture what they actually look like without sort of turning them into something that they're not in a way that sometimes photography can do. So I think this one is amazing. If you are interested in photography, I would highly recommend this one. Love it. This next one is kind of a staple. It's the Chanel Collections and Creations book. I've seen this on Instagram so many times. I think pretty well everybody has it, but it's such a great book. This layered with other fashion coffee table books or with either a vase with flowers or some different candles on top of it is really beautiful. So I think that if you were to start off with one, this might be a good one. This was, I think, my second or third, and I think it's beautiful, and it's on the more affordable side as well. So definitely check this one out if you're looking for a little bit of Chanel for your space. I love this one so much. So this is Joseph Durand, and it's all of his interiors, and it's incredible. I've actually read this book cover to cover. I've gone through and I haven't just looked at all the beautiful photos, but also just to go through and read everything that's mentioned about each photograph is amazing. His brother is the one that's sort of like narrating this and I think it's just a beautiful tribute to him. I just love it so much and I think you can't go wrong with this white fabric and the black detail in the lettering. I just think it's stunning. Okay, so moving on, I have this massive Louis Vuitton that I actually first saw at Pottery Barn and I loved it but I didn't want to pay the full price because I think it has different currencies on it but in Canadian dollars it retails for $157 and if I'm not mistaken I think it might have actually been a little bit more in Pottery Barn but $157 is a lot for a book and even though I have read quite a bit of this one I genuinely love doing that and looking through them. I did buy a lot of these secondhand and this was one of my favorite finds at a little shop down the street from me that I pop into all the time because you never know what you're gonna find. And they always seem to have the greatest collection of fashion coffee table books. So this one, it's literally like killing my arm. It's so heavy. But you can see from the spine, like it's a, it's a very big book and it makes a real statement. I think this is good in basically any space. The colors complement any sort of aesthetic. So I would highly recommend this one. Did you guys see the receipt photo? Honestly, I'm not gonna have to go to the gym today because these things are so heavy. So this Manolo Blahnik, Fleeting Gestures and Obsessions. I think it's so beautiful. I especially love that the majority of these have fabric on top of the covers. It just makes them a little bit more sort of luxurious feeling. In Toronto, where I am, when I was at the University of Toronto, there's what's called the Bata Shoe Museum, which I think is actually pretty popular like internationally, it's a pretty big deal. And they had a Manolo Blahnik exhibition there for at least a couple of the years that I was at the university and it was literally right on campus. And I never went and I've been kicking myself ever since. So being able to have this book and go through and see some of his collections has been really great. I think that everyone really knows him from Sex and the City, obviously. That's basically how he became famous or as famous as he is. It just sort of elevated his fame to a whole other level. And it's just one that I think looks so good in any room in my house because it is subtle, but it does still make an impact. This Chloe book, 
used to be my absolute favorite because this is the first one that I ever got. And it's a really good size. It's not as heavy, it's not as thick as you can see, but this one is beautiful. And I think it was really interesting when I first started reading this one, I realized that Chloe isn't actually her name, it's Gabrielle, and she just really loved the name Chloe. She thought that it had a really nice sound to it when it rolls off the tongue and that's why she named her brand it, which I thought was so interesting because typically with these different fashion houses, it's always named after the designer and instead she decided to do something different, which kind of is the whole point of the brand. It's very kind of quirky and boho chic and I think that this book really does a great job of talking about the history of the brand. So this is a really good one to pick up if you are into Chloe or if you just want to learn some more about the brand. So this one doesn't quite fit the bill of a fashion coffee table book and if anyone knows anything about Caravaggio, you know that he was an Italian artist and his art is absolutely stunning. So I actually lived in Italy for a year and when I was at the Uffizi in Florence, they had so many of Caravaggio's works and they were incredible. I'm telling you, they almost give you like a pain in the pit of your stomach because they're so emotional and you can just tell the pain that he was in when he was making them, but they are stunning. They're the type that you can just keep looking at and looking at and always finding something new. So I was so excited to pick this up. It's very thin, but I did want something that was more in this color and then actually seeing that it was Caravaggio, I thought that's it, done, sold, I love it. I actually got this for I think $15 so it was super on the affordable side and it just goes to show that it doesn't always have to be some major fashion brand like Chanel or Dior. If you wanted to get sort of more of a mix in your collection you can also integrate some art books or interiors books but this one is one that I absolutely love. I've already gone through it quite a few times and I'm just such a big fan of this one. This one is so good. So as you can read at the front, it says Gaetano Savini, the man who was Brioni. This book to me was so interesting. I think I actually did reference this in another video, but his name was Gaetano Savini. He created the brand called Brioni, again, not related to his name. But then after, he ended up changing his own name to include his brand name. So now he's Gaetano Savini Brioni, whereas before, Brioni was not part of the name that he was born with. So I thought that that was so interesting and so just like passion for your brand and doing everything at the service of your brand, just like Diane von Furstenberg says in her masterclass. I just thought that it was so interesting that he actually went ahead and did that. The spine of this is beautiful. It kind of reminds me of the Liag. I don't know how you pronounce that one. I'll have it on screen. It's another one that I'm really interested in getting. Anyway, this Brioni spine reminds me of it. Brioni was all about men's tailoring and menswear, and I just think that it doesn't really get as much attention in sort of the fashion industry. I mean, obviously there are men's lines for basically every fashion house, but having this book just dedicated to menswear is kind of like a breath of fresh air compared to the other books that I own. Okay, this is the last coffee table book and then I've got a couple other ones to share with you as well but this one I'm kind of sad because it got a little bit like battered I'll explain why but this is the front of it it's this Dior new looks book and I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up or not but there are quite a few scratches on where the silver is laid on in the lettering however this is just the cover so it does actually have the book inside that has nothing on the front or the back there's only a little bit of lettering on the side but this book is beautiful and again the images within it there are some that are honestly just breathtaking that I would honestly recommend this one probably the most I'm pretty sure that this one is my favorite I just love it love the aesthetic inside and out and I'm gonna try and do something to fix the box that it comes with but I'll, I'll keep you posted if I'm able to figure out how to do that but anyway this Dior new looks is just incredible okay I wanted to run through a couple other ones just really quickly these aren't exactly coffee table books but they're just sort of fashion related books that are pretty aesthetic so you could definitely use them as decor this first one is the Vogue little black dress and it just goes over the making of the little black dress so it was invented by Karl Lagerfeld I forget in what year but anyway this is a great read and I have read this one cover to cover and I think that for anybody interested in fashion the little black dress is a 
classic, so I don't think that you can go wrong learning a little bit more about it. So this next one is Vogue on Coco Chanel, and if you had have seen the movie Coco before Chanel, I love that movie. I don't know how many times I've watched it, but I love it. And this book just gave me a similar vibe to that movie. I love it so much. I've read it a few times, either two or three. I just think it's so interesting, and her life is not just interesting, but inspiring and kind of mysterious and like rebellious in a way. And I just, I just love the whole story. So I've read this one a bunch of times. It's also very beautiful to look at on the outside. So a great one to pop on your coffee table or on your bedside table as a little like piece of decor. You can find this one secondhand, I think for around like five to $10. So if you are interested in Coco Chanel's life, definitely pick this one up. Speaking of Chanel, I also have this trio that again, and it comes in this hard box. It's got a picture of Chanel number five on the front, Chanel herself on the back or the front, however you want to look at it, and then this beautiful Chanel on the spine. So typically I actually have this resting. Where this lamp is stood, I normally have this in the bottom of that little table, and you can just see the Chanel from when you walk in the room, and I think it's just really beautiful, but I have I'm telling you, I'm, I'm a reader when it comes to fashion. Otherwise, forget it, I'm just not interested. So this trio includes obviously three books, one related to Chanel herself, another one related to everything about perfumes, and the whole process is so interesting and so intricate and very, not well known, I don't think. I didn't know a whole lot about putting perfume and different scents together and the different things that make up Chanel number no. five, the most classic one and my favorite if you didn't already know that. But I think this is a really great read if you are interested in how perfumes are produced and just all the work that goes into it because it really is quite the process. And then the last one is just about her fine jewelry. I think it mentions uh, fashion jewelry as well, but Chanel fine jewelry is just, it's another level. Like it's so expensive, it's so beautiful. Chanel was really inspired by different constellations and the stars, so that's why it has this on the front. But this is also made into a necklace. I can only imagine how expensive it is or was. This is the third in that little trio set and I just think that they're so cute. This is my last book. I actually have one other Chanel book that I just finished. I think it's called The Chanel Sisters. Read it, loved it, I think I cried at the end, it was great. But this is actually a different one that I wanted to show you and it's all about the house of Versace and I think that if you know anything about Gianni Versace's life, this is a really great one to read because it really puts the whole thing into perspective, why he was the way he was, his life before coming to Miami and just how he grew up and the struggles that he had to deal with and it's so interesting to just see the integration of Donatella and, oh my gosh, Paul? Is his name Paul? No, Paul's her santo, santino. Anyway, the other brother. It's really interesting to see how the three siblings really played very distinct roles within the company. So definitely recommend this one. To be honest, I started reading it but ended up sort of falling off the bandwagon, but definitely want to pick it back up again and this is one that I'd like to finish this summer if it's possible. So this is one that I would definitely recommend if you're interested in this fashion house because it's got a lot of great information about how it came to be. Okay, so that's everything for today's video. I don't even know how many that was. I know it's a lot of them, but to me, they're not just pieces of decor. They're books that I get a lot of value from, not just in the knowledge that I get from reading them, but even just the aesthetic appeal is something that I really enjoy. I'll try to have all of these linked in the description bar below. So if you wanted to check out any of these for yourself, just open up the description box and all of the information will be there and links to where you can get them. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye.